history of AI uh, is based on uh, two aspects. Uh, one is adaptation. And in an old book uh, from the late 1940s uh, called Automata Studies, which was published by the Institute, uh, by the uh, Advanced Studies Institute at Princeton University, uh, you have a paper by someone called Ashby Ross talking about adaptation in computers, self-adaptation in computers. So that is one line of artificial intelligence. Another line of artificial intelligence is based on logic. That is, if you can express certain concepts logically, then you can do deduction of their consequences. You can deduce their consequences. And once the logic is defined and the rules are defined, then when, if you wish, your artificial intelligence program comes in a new situation, it applies its logic to the situation in order to decide what should be done or what it must do. So these are the two traditional areas. Uh, as we have had more and more complex computers, and especially as we've had the internet, which seems to regulate itself, to run itself, which of course is not completely true, but we have this feeling that there's a complete system running independently of us. As this is happening, we ask ourselves, is there some form of intelligence, which is based on simply local observation and local decision without being explicitly logical or explicitly designed in advance. This is the subject of the area of self-aware networks. And <clears throat> as you look at things, uh, you can think of um, two areas of application, obvious areas of application. One is economics, where you have millions, billions of agents these are interacting according to their own rules. And then prices form, certain things happen, systems are often stable, but sometimes there are catastrophes. And then the other example, of course, is the Internet itself, where you have uh, millions of uh, computers which are uh, interact. Uh, I'm talking about the millions that are actually managing the Internet, not the millions that are at the edge or the billions that are at the edge, just the ones that are managing the, the Internet. The, the computers that we call routers, which are exchanging information and decisions between each other and which are maintaining a stable and running system. Okay, so these are the two examples that we think about. The economy on the one hand and these and the internet on the other hand. Now, if we become a little bit, bit more, if you wish, uh, scientific, I don't mean that economy is not scientific, but economy is of course often known to be not a very good predictor. Economic theory doesn't necessarily predict things very well. Uh, on the other hand, the methods that we use to design the Internet are scientific. They're based on uh, probability, stochastic processes. They're based on queuing theory. And these methods are giving us fairly stable prediction, predictions within the usual uh, tolerance levels accepted by physics, for instance, or by science. So we do have mathematical methods. So if we have these systems, which we don't actually design top-down anymore, can we let them design themselves bottom-up? And this is the concern for self-aware networks in the more technical, technological context. Now, in this case, uh, what we have been doing is designing the way packets travel in the Internet. What's a packet? A packet is a basic unit of data which contains information and which is traveling independently inside the Internet. A packet has a source node. So if you look at a packet, you will see the name of the node that sent it. You will see the node of its destination, the node that should receive it. When I say name, it's some numerical identifier. So there's that information, then there's content of the data. And then the packet moves autonomously in the, in the network, except that in the Internet of today, the path is predetermined. Well, what's wrong with that? I mean, why, don't, why aren't we happy with that? Well, we're not happy with the path being predetermined because conditions in the network are changing. How have we predetermined it? Usually, we predetermine the path based on the number of nodes that it will visit. That is, we say, oh, better visit less nodes than more. So b try to make a path through the minimum number of nodes. However, when the conditions in the network change, for instance, when there is more traffic on certain parts of the network, then certain paths which are short in number of nodes can be very long in delay. They can be very bad because they are causing losses of the traffic. So we have to adapt. The network should be self-aware 
and should be able to control itself so that it is able to use the best paths all the time and not necessarily the shortest path. So you can now apply the concept of self-awareness to the internet and ask it to be aware of its own situation, self-aware, aware of its own situation, and to modify the way it's moving packets so that the best outcome is being obtained. Okay? Now, how do we do this? Uh, we do this through um, two kinds of packets, or even three. The first kind of packet is the one that's carrying the data. They have to be there, okay? But we don't expect them to take the decisions themselves. Uh, we uh, will take the decisions with the help of smart packets. So smart, smart packets are a minority. We don't want to add too much additional work inside the network just to have self-awareness. So we have a minority of packets whose role is to find out what's going on. We call them smart packets. And then we have to bring back the information that's been discovered by the smart packets to the source that will have to decide how to send its traffic. And these packets will be called ACK, traffic, uh, ACK packets, acknowledgement packets. So we have the, the smart packets that look for the good path, they check how things are going, and we have ACK packets that, that bring back this information to the source. And then the source then says to this packet, please go this way. But this advice, please go this day, will change all the time as a function of what the ACK packets are bringing back as information. And how do you collect this information? We collect this information for the smart packets with the help of oracles. What's an oracle? Well, you've all heard about the oracle of Delphi in Greece, which in, in existed in antiquity. We're not talking about that one. The oracles are actually neural networks, random neural networks, sitting in each of the nodes. This neural network collects information coming from the smart packets, collects information coming from the acts, and based on this makes a reinforcement learning based decision of improving the next step of the packet. So they are saying, well next time better do this, it's going to work better. So the smart packets are going around trying to find out things, the oracles, which are random neural networks, are sitting at the nodes, are modifying the paths. And then the resulting information is brought back to the source that gives the instructions to the next stream of uh, payload, standard packets that are carrying, carrying the data. Uh, if you do this, you must have something we call an objective. And the objective or goal function, this uh, goal, goal function is a mathematical representation of what this network is trying to do well. And this network may be trying to do, I mean, using self-awareness. So it may be trying to do self-awareness better, better things with, through self-awareness for different reasons. One can be, for instance, to make things as fast as possible so that the uh, packets arrive on average as quickly as possible. They can do, do this to avoid loss of packets. They can do this to reduce energy consumption in the internet, which is a huge amount. And it's a long, by far the largest expenditure for operating the internet is the use of electricity. So uh, expenditure and also CO2 impact, of course. So it can have the self-aware network, is using self-awareness, but it can have different objectives. And the objective can be energy, can be delay, it uh, can be uh, uh, certainly the loss of packets. It can be a mix of these things. It can have a, a goal function which mixes these things and tries to do a compromise between them. And this goal function is actually given to each of the neural network oracles. The random neural network oracles are aware of this goal function and in their decisions, they modify decisions so that they do the best with respect to the particular goal function that the network wants to apply. Uh, this, uh, this example of a system is actually something that's been implemented and that is running in various specific uh, contexts, including in protection against um, network attacks. So it's also been used in cybersecurity to route traffic so that you avoid danger. You avoid danger on the one hand and you achieve your objectives of reaching the destination quickly on the other hand. In conclusion, uh, self-aware networks or self-aware systems are a third, view, third way to advance in artificial intelligence. Uh, the idea being that within a system we incorporate the 
capacity to self-observe, self-measure, and to optimize its own objective function, and not an objective function or a method or a logic that it is imposed from the outside. This has, of course, a lot of open questions. Often, uh, you can pose these, these types of ideas, these types of questions, in restricted contexts, for instance, contexts like networks, like the internet, you can do this. Uh, you can do it to a certain extent in systems of agents, and we did this a few years ago for emergency management. So, for instance, if you have a self-aware system whose objective is to save as many lives as possible, how does it act in presence of an emergency such as a fire, not just one fire, but a fire here, an accident there, some other thing happening somewhere else, and it has to dispatch, for instance, ambulances and firefighting equipment and other uh, resources to these different places simultaneously. So how do you do that? And we looked at the application of self-aware systems to this particular field in a, in a large project and uh, made some uh, proposals, offers, and even took some patents with industry. So industry adopted some of our recommendations for these, these kinds of applications. Uh, so you can apply it in these contexts when the system becomes very complex in the sense that it's using many different forms of physical entities. Uh, the question of uh, self-awareness and self-organization become much more difficult. Another area where it's much more difficult is, for instance, suppose you are trying to organize flights above the Atlantic in this manner. You have huge safety issues uh, that come up. So the question then is, can I allow myself to use these concepts, these new concepts, in a context where there are such huge issues of safety and also of reliability and regulation. 